Granulomatous inflammation is a specialized type of inflammation. It occurs when the usual chronic inflammatory response cannot get rid of the offending agent. Typical example is tuberculosis. Even though neutrophil plays the major role in acute inflammation, macrophage is the major cell type in chronic inflammation. Before we begin our discussion on granulomatous inflammation itself, we may recall some important facts on the macrophage. Macrophage is one of the major component of the mononuclear phagocyte system, also known as the reticulondothelial system. Mononuclear phagocyte system is composed of closely related cell types, including blood monocytes and tissue macrophages. Actually, tissue macrophages are derived from blood monocytes. When a monocyte migrates into a tissue from the blood, it is transformed into a macrophage. This transformation is mediated by various chemicals including adhesion molecules and cytokines. Macrophages are given different names in different tissues. The liver macrophages are known as coup fur cells. In the spleen and lymph nodes, we have sinus histiocytes. In the lungs, we have alveolar macrophages. And in the central nervous system, we have microglia. The macrophage has to undergo activation in order to elicit its functions. Macrophages can be activated by various types of stimuli, including microbial products, cytokines and gamma interferon which is secreted by T lymphocytes. The activated macrophage has two major functions to eliminate the injurious agent and to initiate the repairing process. For the elimination, they secrete reactive oxygen and nitrogen species, proteases which digest a pathogen, cytokines, coagulation factors and arachidonic acid metabolites. To initiate the repairing process, they secrete growth factors such as platelet-derived growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, and transforming growth factor beta. Fibrogenic cytokines which stimulate fibrosis angiogenic factors which cause angiogenesis and collagen remodelers. Even though the purpose of the macrophage is to eliminate the injurious agent, they can cause damage to the surrounding tissue as well. This is due to the secretion of reactive oxygen and nitrogen species and proteases. Thus, tissue destruction is a characteristic feature in chronic inflammation. In acute inflammation, macrophages disappear soon after the elimination of the injurious agent, either by dying off or making their way into the lymphatics. However, in chronic inflammation, macrophages tend to accumulate at the site of inflammation. This is due to the continuous recruitment of the macrophages from the blood, local proliferation of the macrophages at the site of inflammation, and immobilization of the macrophages. Immobilization is mainly due to the secretion of migration inhibitory factor by the lymphocytes. Now let's discuss about the pathogenesis of granulomatous inflammation. As we know, granulomatous inflammation occurs when the offending agent is resistant to be killed by the macrophages. So, the macrophages are stimulated to become epithelioid cells, which have more microbial killing ability than macrophages. So, granuloma is actually a collection of epithelioid cells, surrounded by a rim of lymphocytes. Sometimes there may be multinucleated giant cells and fibroblasts as well. In parasitic infections, eosinophils also present in the granuloma. Multinucleated giant cells are formed by the fusion of several epithelioid cells. There are many different types of giant cells. I will discuss about them later in this video. Granulomatous inflammation causes more tissue destruction than usual chronic inflammation due to the high microbial killing ability of the epithelioid cells. Here is a diagram which shows the arrangement of a granuloma and the migration of monocytes. The major cell type in granuloma is the epithelioid cell. There are two types of granulomas according to their pathogenesis. Foreign body granuloma and immune granuloma. Foreign body granulomas occur when the offending agent cannot be phagocytosed by a single macrophage. Usually occurs against materials such as talc, suture material and other types of fibers. There is no immune response in foreign body granulomas. The foreign agent can be identified at the center of the granuloma. Immune granulomas occur when the offending agent is poorly degradable. In this type of granulomas, macrophages engulf the bacterial antigens, process them and present them to the T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes in response, secrete cytokines which help digest the foreign agent and activate other lymphocytes. And they secrete more and more gamma interferon which activates macrophages. Now let's discuss about the different cell types in granulomatous inflammation. Epithelioid cells are derived from the activated tissue macrophages around the inflamed area. They have a pale eosinophilic cytoplasm. 
dispersed chromatin due to the increased synthetic activity. Elongated nucleus which is a shape of a footprint. Less phagocytic ability than macrophages. Enhanced secretory ability and more microbial killing ability than macrophages. All the multinucleated giant cells are formed by the fusion of epithelioid cells. Langen's giant cells have their nuclei at the periphery of the cell, resembling a horseshoe. Typically seen in tuberculosis. Foreign body type giant cells have randomly arranged nuclei. They usually occur in foreign body granulomas. Tauntin giant cells are formed by the union of foamy macrophages in fat necrotic tissues. In the periphery of the cell, there are fat-containing vacuoles, and they push the nuclei towards the center of the cell. There are three morphological patterns in granulomas. In caseidin granulomata, the center of the granuloma undergoes caseous type of necrosis, commonly seen in tuberculosis. In non-necrotizing granulomata, there is no center necrosis, seen in sarcoidosis, leprosy and Crohn's disease. In suppurative necrosis, the center shows suppurative necrosis with neutrophils. Seen in cat scratch disease, fungal infections and rarely in tuberculosis. All right. That concludes our today's topic. Hope it made sense. If you liked and learned something from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Leave a comment down the comment section. Share this video among your friends. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.